Welcome to Never Enough Time. It's a gorgeous day at the lake. Uh, we've been taking uh, some videos and uh, shooting uh, some watch reviews out here. <laughs> People go out and water ski and actually engage in sports. I take pictures and do watch reviews uh, to each his own, right? That's what uh, liberty and freedom is all about in this great country. Why the specs? Why these spectacles? Yeah, well, they look a little uh, ridiculous, but today we're taking a look at a retro diver. So we thought we'd put some retro uh, specs on as well. We're taking a look at the Certina uh, DS uh, PH200M. It's a uh, vintage and style dive watch, actually a reissue from uh, the late 60s, 67, 68, something like that. And uh, spoiler alert, I think this is a pretty good watch for under uh, $600. Uh, so let's take a look at it. So we'll try to roll in some good uh, photos. We've taken a lot of them today and some uh, footage as well. The shadows are gonna be a little bit tricky, but what's nice about doing a watch like this on a bright sunny day outside is this is a Hesalite or acrylic crystal, which uh, makes it a little bit easier uh, for legibility and for doing things like shooting videos uh, and photos. But let's take a look at the uh, specs here. We have a 43 millimeter case and if you go to the website, they'll actually say 42.8, but seriously, 0.2 millimeters. Let's just make it easy on all of us. We'll call it 43, 52 lug to lug, 13 and a half thick. It is a 20, 20 millimeter uh, lug width. We have, like I said, the Hesalite crystal. We have a 120 uh, click unidirectional dive bezel, 200 meters of water resistance. And on the back of the watch, of course, with the NATO here, you got some rigmarole. Uh, but we're rolling some footage. The back of the watch has a, a, a Certina Turtle. And this is a watch that, um, if you go and to the website and actually read about this watch, it is a reissue from uh, 67, uh, I believe. I'm doing this off the top of my head. It could be 68, somewhere in the very late 60s. And it looks practically like that watch, uh, but this is a bigger watch. So we'll talk about that in a second. There is the uh, turtle back uh, case on that. This watch comes in a, uh, like a waterproof dive case. It uh, comes with two straps, a NATO, not this NATO. I put this, this uh, particular NATO on. It is a, a Mora NATO, which by the way, they don't have any idea who I am, but these are uh, outstanding. Um, NATO straps, extremely comfortable, high quality. Uh, I, I really uh, enjoy them quite a bit. But the watch comes in a, like I said, in a um, waterproof uh, case that you see sometimes from micro brands. And then it also comes with a NATO strap with uh, quick release spring bars. And then also a leather strap with the quick release spring bars. So a nice little dive package, uh, a nice little, um, I should say a nice little watch package that Certina does. Uh, the movement is a Powermatic 80.611, which is an 80 hour power reserve. It's a similar movement, not similar, it's a movement that you see in some Tussauds and Hamiltons with that 80 hour power reserve. So when we talk about those specs, the 43, the 52 lug to lug, you know, what does that actually uh, translate to in terms of wearability, uh, comfort, and et cetera? Well, the first thing I would say is that with the lug to lug like this and uh, the turn down uh, case here on the lugs, it really snugs to your wrist. So it wears pretty tight to your wrist, uh, very thin and comfortable. I mean, at 43 and 52 lug to lug, I think it's gonna knock out you know, the small end of the six inch wrist range. And so you're looking at probably, you know, six and a quarter up to, I wear it on the on an eight inch wrist, that lug to lug uh, on an eight and a quarter inch wrist actually, very comfortable. And actually my daughter and wife find watches of this size comfortable. I don't know, I haven't really thought about it, but bigger watches, um, the girls in my life, the ladies in my life can pull off bigger watches with a smaller wrist and I'm not sure why that is if fashion's different for women or what the case is. But extremely comfortable to wear, but it is a, a big watch. So I think uh, if that is something, if, if you don't like 
40 millimeter and above, this is gonna be tough, and especially that 52 or 53 lug to lug, uh, it's almost 53, so you do have a big uh, span on the wrist, quite the wrist presence. Now, in terms of the dial, uh, we have the sword hands. It is loomed in the, the website doesn't say, but with that icy blue, I'm gonna say it's a BGW9 or BW, BGW9 uh, loom, loom, and it looks really good. Uh, and it's, it's a decent lasting loom as well. You have a glossy uh, painted dial with painted, um, painted markers, uh, painted indices, if you will. And uh, the bezel has all, all the minute markings as well. So uh, very uh, retro for sure. And actually there's, there's a lot of watches when I try to get in, I tried as I've dabbled into vintage, that's a whole another world and, and a set of videos, but the, this actually very much looks like a vintage watch. The bezel action actually feels vintage too, which is to say it isn't that really hard tactile, um, uh, watch say like, a, I mean, when you're turning the bezel on a helm, I mean, it feels like you're in the, in, the, in the military there. This one has a much softer um, retro, I guess, feels the best way of saying it. Uh, so solid there. It does have a, a little bit of back play on the bezel. Uh, I'd say that's one of the negatives on that. So from a, from a uh, positive standpoint and, and what's good about this watch, well, you, there's a couple of things. One, I think this could be an everyday watch for sure. Um, you have the uh, date complication at uh, three o'clock. You have a little bit of color with a splash of red on the second hand. And I think any black dial white, black dial watch with white indices um, is a really good option for an everyday watch. Uh, you'll see uh, this photo or a series of photos on this with leather straps and this watch looks really nice. Uh, but I think that black and white again is such a good color for being an everyday watch. So this could be an everyday watch. The power reserve at 80 hours, this almost became my permanent um, everyday watch because I could wear it throughout the week, take it off on Friday night, put it on Monday morning and not have any issues with resetting it. Other watches that I might like a little better from an aesthetic standpoint, like I, I love the look of the Zen 104. I love the look of the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot. Uh, and even uh, the Helm Vanuatu that I'm wearing quite a bit these days. But all of them, if you take it off for two days, you're gonna be resetting your watch, rewinding your watch, etc. I love the 80 hour power reserve on this. I love the vintage look, uh, the sword hands, um, the uh, Hesalite crystal. Yes, you can scratch it if you beat the tar out of this watch. Uh, the poly watch I have found takes those buffs out well. Actually, I kind of wish a few more watches would have the Hesalite or the acrylic crystal. Uh, when you look at this watch through through that, um, and especially it's slight, it's a it's a slightly domed or boxed sapphire crystal, and you just get some really neat looks into the dial itself. Some good distortions, super legible. Uh, you don't have that sapphire reflectiveness issue. Uh, so, an absolutely thoroughly enjoyable watch to look at, to wear, uh, to enjoy. Uh, what are some downsides uh, to the watch or things that I wish were different? The bezel I wish was a little bit tighter. Like I mentioned, we have a little bit, it's a little bit on the back play. Uh, I would also say that the straps that came with it were okay. The NATO strap I found to be a little short or a little, um, yeah, it's short. It just, it was for a NATO strap. Uh, I didn't have any excess to tuck in here on the Moro. That's why I bought the Moro strap. I could actually, uh, tuck it in so uh, I would say better straps and uh, I wish they would would tighten up the bezel a bit but outside of that I mean you think about this a Swiss made watch 80 hour power reserve $580 new um, and these don't show up on eBay a lot you're gonna pay at least 500 on eBay too um, they're they I don't know if you would say they hold their value very well or they just they just don't come up enough to depress the price so the supply so uh, all around, um, very solid watch. I think if you're someone who likes to check the boxes on your watch collection, this could be an everyday watch. It could be a great weekend uh, watch. It could be a great uh, water sport watch. Um, 
I think it checks all of those uh, boxes. Now, whether or not you like it is going to depend probably on two things, uh, what you think about um, the bezel action, uh, but more importantly, uh, what you feel about the Hesalite crystal. I know that there's some who just sapphires it. Sapphire is all they will do. That's fine. Uh, that's what watch collecting is all about. But if you're looking for a vintage look, a vintage feel, uh, a vintage watch in every sense, except that it's was manufactured uh, in the last uh, couple of years, or depending on when you buy it, it could be even manufactured this year, but a, a modern watch, 80 hour power reserve, good dial uh, to look at, nice red second hand to break it up a bit, easy legibility inside and out. Um, what's not to love? 585, I think that's a bargain. Uh, for that movement, that power reserve, and that look. So thanks for hanging out. We're going to do a couple more at the beach. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you later.